Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bechger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. This is another of the um, fancy folds, if you will, and it's a very simple card and it opens this way. And um, I use the uh, stamp set called Serene Garden. And the other stamp set I used for this is stitched all around. Um, and in the Serene Garden, what I used was this corner stamp, this stamp here, this stamp, floral stamp here. And in this stitched all around, what I used was the best wishes. I like the simpleness of the best wishes sen uh, sentiment in this one. So... I had a request from someone, uh, Cindy Coven, who asked to see about stamping multiple things with the Stamparatus, and I thought this would be a good one to use to demonstrate using the, the Stamparatus to do the front of this card anyway. So um, that's what I'm going to, to do. And what you need to make this card is you need actually half of one of these eight and a half by 11. I'm using um, very vanilla pieces of cardstock. And um, when we get done with this, this will give you the ability to make um, two cards. And I'll show you, you, you just have to cut it a little differently in order to get it to work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to cut this card. So I'm going to bring up my trimmer here and the first thing we're going to do is score this piece of paper at four and a quarter. Let's see if you can see that here at the top. Score it at four and a quarter. I'm going to move my cutting blade out of the way. And set this up and score this at four and a quarter. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go the other way and score it again at five and a half. Um, and th this card was inspired by one I've seen, well actually I've seen many of them out there with this kind of a opening to them and I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, but there are lots and lots of those out there. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is cut this piece of paper. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you here on your trimmer, I'm going to remove the blade. I'm going to, here on the bottom of the, of the cutter is this section where it's the channels just a little bit wider. And to move or change your blade, you move it into that section and then you use, I use my fingernail and just pick up this little point here. Then what I'm going to do is move this down here and my objective is to remove my scoring blade. Then I'm just going to put my cutting blade back in and create that back into place. There we go. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to set this this way so that you can see, because I think you can see the whole thing that way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper, and the reason we need the scoring blade out is because we need this whole cutting channel to do what we're going to do next. And what I'm going to do is put the point for this end of the paper into the cutting channel, right smack dab in the middle of it, and I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom end here. And cutting this precisely is probably a really good idea. So now what I'm going to do is just take my cutting blade. I hope that didn't move. And cut that so that I end up with two diagonal halves of the paper, but they're scored. And so this, each one of these will make a card for you. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna move that out of the way. And the other thing that we need is we need, and I just realized I got an ink blot on this one, so I'm gonna to have to cut another 
piece here. We need a um, piece of paper here that is four by five and a quarter. That one is four by, look at that, four by five and a quarter. Wonderful. I'm not going to have to cut anything. All right. Okay, so here we have our two halves of our paper, and that's to make two cards. And then we have um, one piece that is four by five and a quarter. And I think the next thing we should do is do our stamping. So I'm going to move all the rest of this out of the way and bring in my Stamparatus. So um, what I'm going to do is take my Stamparatus and put it here into place and take my piece of card and tuck it into the corner. Now, um, I want this, these corner folds can be folded either way so that you have a panel here at the bottom so that the card opens this way. If you folded it the other way back, then you would have something that opened up and out. And so you've got to decide which way you want it to be. I kind of like this way. So that would mean that I would need the full panel to this side, and this is the corner that I'd be working on. So in order to do that, I want this piece here, this, this floral piece, down here in this corner. Now, I have been messing around with this all afternoon, and this is one that I stamped a little bit earlier. And this is where your Stamparatus and having more than one door to work with can be very handy. On this one, when I put this one on here, you'll see that I didn't get it square. And I really want this to have the same amount of border on both sides. So I've got my stamp here, and I thought I would set this up here and set it up so that it had more of a similar border by tucking it right into the corner here. And that's the beauty. I guess I just didn't pay attention when I was doing it before. But there I've got that so that I think it's got the same amount of border on both sides. And then I'm going to just lower the door here and pick up my stamp. Oh, I didn't put any, I didn't put any magnets down. So there we go. I'm going to take this all and stick it back in the corner again. And for the moment, I'm going to have this set up to come down here. And suddenly that doesn't look straight to me. So I'm going to set it down again. And set it so that it's straight and pick up that stamp. Now I'm going to take the other door here and I'm going to put it into place. And what I found that when I, I tried to put both stamps on here and what I found was that when I did that, I pushed them right up against one another in this corner here. Oh, and I cut one of the flowers off. <laughs> uh, I guess I won't be returning that one to Stampin' Up! for any reason. Um, but I, on that stamp, and I'll show you on the case, on the stamp case that shows the stamp, that... Um, shows two of the flowers going one direction, one of the flowers going the other direction. And don't ask me why, but it bothered me. So um, I decided that I would put both of the, just use the two flowers going the same direction. And even when I snugged them up, they this is how far apart they stamped from one another. 
So what I'm going to do is put this, this stamp here, and I'll show you. This is how, what you do for two-step stamping um, as, you, uh, as you get organized to put stamps on more than one door, is you put your stamps kind of where you want them. And in this case, I'm going to put this one right here. Now, I'm going to use this same door to pick that one up. There we go. And I set it so that it should have a similar margin on both sides. Now, I'm going to show you how you can set this up. And when you're doing two-step stamping, it would work exactly the same way. I know that if I just put this other stamp on here, it's going to be too far away because of all of the little edges. So the first thing I'm going to do is using my Memento ink, I'm going to go ahead and ink up these two stamps. And what you would do is, of course, if you're doing multiple colors, is you could ink up this in one color, you could ink up this in another, and then we're going to use the door to the other door to put the flowers closer to that image, and I'll show you how here in just a second. And so if you had two or three step stamping, obviously you can do up to four step stamping with the Stamparatus. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead, first I have to move my magnet out of the way here, and get my image put down here on my card and it's pretty close it looks like I needed to put a little bit more pressure on that last little leaf there we go I could use a little bit better image down here at the bottom on this so I'm just going to re-ink that and push that back into place down here God, the Stamparatus is wonderful for that. So now I have a very good, clean, crisp image on everything. All right. Now, what I know is that I want those flowers, here they are, to be right bunched up next to this leaf. And in fact, I'm going to use the point of the center leaf right at the point where the two flowers join to kind of tuck them in kind of close. Now, I could never do that with one opportunity because it would, it would interfere with the other stamp. So what I'm going to do is use the other door here to pick up this stamp, and we're going to ink that one up and again, like I said, if you were doing multiple colors, like you were doing a stem and, and then the flowers, you might do the stem in green, and then you might do the flowers in whatever color you're going to do. And so now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this little stamp right here, and there we go. I've got my two little flowers tucked in closer to the leaves, and... Um, uh, and, and I'm happier with that as the result. Now, uh, it is Memento, and I'm going to be using my Stampin' Blends to do my stamping. The other thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a greeting on here. Uh, my greeting is Best Wishes, and I would like that Best Wishes to be right here. I think that's kind of where I put it on this card. I suppose I could put it up here at the top and leave this open, but I kind of liked it right down here. So again, I'm just going to use this same door and pick that one up, and I'm going to do that as well. This was a little bit more tricky, only because this stamp is not photopolymer, and I know I have my photopolymer sheet underneath here, but it's fine. It'll, it, it 
prints, I mean, it stamps just perfectly that way too. So there we go. There we have it. Um, and I could have done each of those stamps in different colors. So that's one of the ways you can use your Stamparatus to get that kind of an image. Okay, so now I'm going to clean these stamps up just a little bit here with my chamois. I'm really getting hooked on this thing. It just makes cleanup so simple. And I saw somebody the other day put this in a uh, regular Stampin' Up! Uh, empty case and it just fit and then they closed it and then opened it, scrubbed with it and put it back away and it might be handier than what I'm doing now. So uh, I've ordered some empty stamp cases and we'll see how that works. Okay, so this is all ready to go and I'm going to set my Stamparatus aside for the moment here. And now the other thing we're going to do is I've got two things that I want to try and do with this yet. Um, I decided I liked all different kinds of ideas on this. This felt front felt just a little bit plain, particularly up on this top side. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these, this panel and we're going to do what we did with the card base to begin with. And that is put the two points in the cutting channel, smack in the middle of the cutting channel. And the other thing I would point out to you is I just ran this up. Now, what will happen is because it is a point running against a point, it can dislodge your paper, move it around. Um, if you're doing where it's put up against the edge here, butted up and you're pushing it through, um, it's not ever a problem. So when you're doing something that goes angle to angle like this, sometimes it's better to have your cutting blade put inside the card. Then what you can do is hold this down and cut away and then come back in and cut up. And that way you won't scrunch any corners. Okay. Oh, that's not a very, not a very straight job. I'm going to have to trim off just a tiny bit on this end in order for that to work the way it's supposed to. There we go. Just took off a sliver off the edge there. I want that edge to be nice and straight and to a point. Okay, so here we go. We've got these two pieces now to go on the front of our card. And it's best to do your stamping and then cut this because I've already done it. Let me tell you, uh, I've already figured out that I did one where I ended up stamping on this side uh, because I cut it first and then stamped it. Not a good idea. Things end up in the wrong places. So I would encourage you to stamp your panel first and then cut it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is do some coloring. And um, what I am using is I'm using my Stampin' Blends for part of the coloring. And then I'm using my watercolor pencils for another part of it, and I'll explain why in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is the coloring for this, and I'm using a pale pinkish marker here and then a darker pink and the rich razzleberry here. And I'm going to speed this up while I color this. And I'll be back in a flash.
Okay, so there we have the coloring done for the front of our card. And the last thing I think I'm going to do is I thought I would put this side after it's all been done into the softly falling folder here at the top just to add a little extra dimension at the top. I'll do that and I'll be right back. And there we go. We've got a little bit of further dimension on this top piece and I think I'm going to like that. Okay, so now we've got um, our card base here and I'm thinking that what I did on this one is I put that corner stamp here in um, a couple places and then I use the stamp here again and I think I'm just going to use the two again. So uh, I'm going to stamp those in place. Let's see, how do I want this to be? I want this to work this way. Okay, so uh, I'm going to grab my stamps. I'm going to stamp that corner image a couple of times here. Make sure I don't have any ink on my hands here. Uh, and I'm going to stamp it right up here in the corner. And then I'm going to stamp it right down here in the corner. And then I'm going to uh, also stamp those two little flowers. And I'm going to stamp these little flowers right down here like I did on the front of the card. There we go. All right. Now, again, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I'm going to do some coloring. And I'm going to add some color on this just like I did on the front. And I'm using Melon Mambo and I'm also using Rich Razzleberry. And then I am using my old olive pencil and a blender pen because, as you know, blenders uh, soak through the paper and this is the back of my card so I don't want that to happen so I'm just going to use watercolor pencils instead and I'll speed this up again. There we go. So, um, and you saw that I used, I put stamens in on all of the flowers. I think it finishes them off pretty nicely. Okay, on the folding of this card, what we want is that this edge should meet up with, is this edge the very closest we can get it? And if that means that this is, um, let's see, where's my bone folder? There it is. Um, Let's just get that exactly, exactly right. All right. And then once that's done, then this one, oh dear, got a little bit of a mark on that edge. All right, so now what we're going to do is have this one fold down so that they don't interfere with one another when they close. We don't want them hitting each other. So this one will fold down also and get it to close so that this card then just closes nicely and it'll take a couple of burnishes on this to get this to lie exactly right and what I have found is 
that to break down the fibers, sometimes if I burnish it going the other way as well, it breaks down those fibers and then it's more ready to be burnished the other way again. And you just need to be firm with it. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to put our panels on here. And because this was four by five and a quarter to start with, and there's just a small border around this whole piece. And in this case, I think I'm going to lay this one flat and I'm going to raise this top one on dimensionals. So for this one, I'm just going to use some snail to adhere this. kind of a long edge on that one. So, setting this down so that it has a similar margin all the way around. There we go. And then sitting this one down. And this one I'm going to put up on dimensionals. There we go. Now I just have one last little thing to do to add a little bit to this. And that is I took some of the sequins from the uh, iridescent sequin assortment here. And I uh, put a tip in my newsletter this time about putting the the glue dot on the back of your pokey tool here. It helps pick up little things. And so I'm picking up um, a couple of the green iridescent um, dimensionals and some of the pink ones. And I thought I could uh, dot those around on the card. There we go. Um, that is the project for the day. Let me move some of these things out of the way. And I'm actually very pleased with this. Um, the first time I did this, I wasn't very happy with it at all. But, um, you know, I don't give up. <laughs> and most of us don't. Um, and I'm very pleased with the way that came out. This was the uh, the second one, not my prototype. In fact, I was so upset with my prototype, I threw it away. Um, but this one has a little bit more to it. I think that the embossing folder on this adds quite a bit, makes it look a lot more finished. And there's something about that that just makes the card more complete. I put a few more sequins on this one which I think also helps it fills in a little bit. But that is the project for the day um, and thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it and uh, anything that's here can be purchased on my website www.lbedinger.stampinup.net and um, uh, see this this I love this stamp set. I, I could hardly wait to get my hands on it. 
Um, and I've had it for a while. It's been burning a hole in my pocket because <laughs> I really wanted to work with it. I've got a few more cards planned with it, and I think it's such a beautiful set. And what we have on the inside is a de little decoration here on both of them. And pretty pleased with all of that. And uh, let's see, the winner of uh, the June um, prize, which was the Sitting Pretty Bundle, was Darcy Walker. And uh, so I've got the, uh, the stamp set on order and it will be going to Darcy any time now. And the, um, the prize draw for the month of July is a Stamparatus. And so that's a, a $49 value in the catalog, and it, it's going to be kind of fun to give that one away. Um, so again, thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. There is some amazing deals going on with Stampin' Up! right now. The first is, um, right now, there's a buy three, get one free uh, designer series paper, and there's 10 papers in, um, in the offer. And um, uh, it'll be up on my website. And let's see, the other thing that's going on is that through the, and that's through the month of July, the paper sale is through the month of July. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to build your stash. Uh, and the nice thing about it is it's early in the season. So we've got a whole year on this catalog. So we can use that paper and use it between now and next year. Now, the other thing that is going on is an offer for joining Stampin' Up! Right now and always, you get, um, you know, $125 worth of product for $99 when you join. And right now, uh, there's also a 10 ink pad family color offer. And by that, it means you can get all 10 of the neutrals, all 10 of the subtles, all 10 of the regals or the brights, or both sets, five each of the in colors. And that is added to your starter kit, $75 value. So right now, through the month of July, joining Stampin' Up! If you join now, um, you'll get $200 worth of product for $99. So if you've ever thought about it, now is the time to consider it more, uh, more carefully. And my phone number is always listed below on the video, and or you could reach me on my website, and I'd be happy to talk with you about it. There's certainly no pressure. Um, but if you wanna know how the deal works and what it means to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and all of that, uh, that mostly what it means is you get discounts on the stuff you probably already ordered. So, um, and that's going to go also for the month of July. So a great time. And also from the standpoint of this time of year, we've just passed a quarter with the end of June. So you don't have a first full quarter once July starts, which is today, until the fourth quarter of the month, which means you have six months to meet your first $300 minimum. Um, and I don't know about you, but it doesn't take me very long, especially over a six month period to order $300 worth of stuff. And that gets you into the first quarter of next year, which is guess what? Celebration, the occasions catalog. So it gets you six months to make your first order and you have until year end. Then you'll be getting discounts for the annual catalog, the fall catalog, which uh, will be coming out in a couple months, and then for the occasions catalog in after the first of the year. So it's a wonderful time of the year to join. Um, and so that's it for me today. I will be back soon with more projects and more cards. Bye.